Hello everyone, welcome to Scalia.com. I'm Dr. Hina Khan and today we're going to discuss the diseases that are pertaining to the orbital cavity. So there are different infections that can travel or the patients usually come up to the outpatient departments with different cellulitis or abscess conditions. There are mainly the uh, acquired conditions that arises in the orbital cavity. And on the other hand, we have the miscellaneous uh, congenital conditions that can also arise in the orbital cavity. So we'll be discussing primarily the developmental anomalies of the orbit. Uh, majorly, the uh, underlying pathology of the developmental anomalies is the premature closure of the sutures uh, that is basically giving a D-shaping phenomena to the skull on a whole and it's also involving the orbital cavity. So we'll be discussing the different uh, syndromic conditions that arises due to these congenital anomalies over here. Then we'll be moving on to the preceptal cellulitis. So there are a lot of infections that occur anterior to the orbital septum and that are basically categorized as the preceptal cellulitis. The sign and symptoms, the clinical features, the treatment modalities out there will be discussed briefly in this lecture. We'd be considering the orbital cellulitis as well as the intraorbital abscesses along with it. So if the infections are pertaining prior to the orbital septum, they would be considered as the orbital cellulitis and these infections can be uh, quite complicated as the infections can travel to the uh, cranial fossas as well as they can travel to the neighboring structures. So these complications have to be avoided whenever we have these abscess structures or as well as whenever we have these orbital cellulitis. One should know how to treat these cases vigilantly. Either you can perform the medical uh, procedures over here or you can also revert to the surgical procedures to treat to the cases who are non-responsive to the medical treatment. That is the topical and the systemic antibiotics. Along with that, we also use the uh, systemic steroidal therapies for these patients. Then we'd be discussing a condition which is known as orbital mucor mycosis. As the word indicates, it's basically the mucor or the rhizopus that is the main etiological factor over here. And that is basically giving way to the fungal infections in these individuals. So one should know how to treat these cases of orbital mucor mycosis and what can be the complications relating to this particular disease phenomena. We'd be briefly discussing the cavernous sinus thrombosis, the treatment modalities, the sign and symptoms, and how can these cases of cavernous sinus thrombosis complicate. Um, as a physician, you should be well versed with this condition. So we have a range of ophthalmopathies that are being discussed on our website, so do watch these lectures. That's the end. Thanks for watching scaria.com and get access to watch the complete lecture.